If you've never listened to another Radio Chatter podcast before, this is definitely a good one to start at. This is so much fun. David Coverdale is my guest today from uh, White Snake. And then the second part with, uh, well, I guess guest host Don Jameson. We'll talk to him coming up here in a little bit. But first, David Coverdale talks about all sorts of stuff, including his active Twitter fingers, 40 years of White Snake, uh, Joel Holkstra, his guitar virtuoso, as well as a great story about Jason Bonham as a very a young kid behind the drums and a possibility of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with Whitesnake and the Mayoff uh, definitely going to try to get uh, p- propose uh, Whitesnake and believe it or not uh, Coverdale Pay wow project. David Coverdale is up first on the Radio Chatter podcast today followed by that metal guy Don Jameson from Detroit Rock City. Detroit Rock City. This is the Radio Chatter Podcast. Here's your host, Meltdown. Wow, what a podcast we got for you today. This is a really good one and an interesting one. Up second, Don Jameson from That Metal Show, and he talks about the legendary band he's going to be going out on tour with, at least for four stops, as well as uh, his recent vinyl scores, uh, the Monsters of Rock Cruise, uh, different rock and roll stories here and there. But up first, it's David Coverdale. I've never met or interviewed David Coverdale before, but I've heard him before and uh, talking on other podcasts, other interviews and different things, and the guy is just so much fun. I mean, this guy just lives life to the fullest. I've said this before on the radio, too. He's one of the best guys in rock and roll to follow on Twitter. He is on Twitter all the time, posting funny pictures and different comments and different things like that. But I wanted to take you back to an interview I did uh, in September with his guitar player, Joel Hoekstra, and we talked a little bit about what he had coming up as far as the future of Whitesnake was concerned, and here's what that sounded like. Basically, in a day or two here, I leave to uh, record the white, the new White Snake album, my guitar stuff on that as well, so i got a lot going on right now. Wait a second. Tell me about this uh, new White Snake album. Totally brand new material. All new stuff. Yeah, yeah. All 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 new stuff. Due out in the spring of, of 2018 with a tour to follow. So I'm psyched about that too, man. You know, um, I know you're on Twitter and stuff. I love following David Coverdale. <laughs> yeah, David. David's a blast, man. And you know, as funny as he is on his Twitter, he he's that way in person, man. He's all he's all about the laughs while you're getting the work done. He's a, he's a wonderful guy to work for. I've had a, a blast being in, in White. Yeah, all these years I've uh, done this, uh, almost 30 now, I've never had a chance to uh, meet David Coverdale, and I was going to ask you what kind of guy he is, but uh, I, I see he likes to drink his wine, he likes to stay out in the, in the, in, in the, the mountains wherever he lives or something, and post funny things on Twitter, so. <laughs> yeah, he, li- he, li- he loves Tahoe, you know, that he got set up there back in the day, he's got a beautiful home, and uh, yeah, man, he's just a great guy, man, he, he is one of the guys, he loves the camaraderie of feeling like just a regular old band member, even though it's like, well, David, you know, no, you've you've played with Richie Blackmore and, and Jimmy Page. I have, you know. It's like there's a little difference between us, man. You know, uh, I think I don't know what David's total of, of albums sold. You know, seventy five million or something crazy with everything with his Deep, Deep Purple and everything. So you know, he look, he's rock royalty and all that stuff. And but he's a wonderful guy. Now, I have a great time working with him. So you say you're going to start recording this new record. Now, is do you guys have anything put together for it, or do you guys show up in the studio and then start working on it, or do you guys have plans yet or what? Uh, we've been working on writing, you know, throughout uh, throughout the year. There's been a couple trips out there doing that, and then a couple other trips out there doing some other top secret projects. You know, David's always got me working on stuff out there. <laughs> and then, but in terms of my actual guitar tracks for the the new album, those are going down here. Uh, head out in a, in a few days to, and I think I'll be out there about nine days or so to, to cut it all. But there's lots of material, man. We got lots of stuff. And do you bring uh, do you bring stuff to the table, or I mean, do you bring riffs in and say, hey, Dave, check this out? or are you part yeah, of the writing he process? Cool. Yeah, he was, he was cool. Yeah, yeah. He, he's got a very casual way about writing with you. You know, well, he'll kind of say, I have this idea and where would you go with it? And that, that kind of thing. It usually starts with David's idea. Occasionally it can start with one of ours, uh, but usually Dave, it'll start with David's and we kind of uh, guide it along, give him some options where we could take it. And, uh, you know, he, he works real quick in that department. He's a great writer. Just a little behind the scenes as far as how uh, White Snake works with uh, guitarist Joel Holkstra. And I'll tell you what, if you've never seen him play guitar before and you're a guitar fan, do yourself a favor. That guy is unbelievable on the guitar. Uh, whether you see him even with Cher or with Trans-Siberian Orchestra or this coming summer with uh, the guys from Whitesnake. I mean, as David talks about in the interview as well, this guy is just so good. Really excited to give you this interview 
interview with David Coverdale. He was so much fun to talk to. I could have talked to him for a long time, but he was on one of these uh, press junkets where they, you know, get you in, get you out, and uh, move on to the uh, the next uh, interview. But uh, anyways, it was so cool, and he's so hospitable and just uh, so much fun to talk to. Here's David Coverdale today on the Radio Chatter Podcast. Having a meltdown or... Hey, David, how are you? I'm doing very really well, thank you. I think I'm doing better than you, Meltdown. Hey, I don't know, man. I don't know about that. I, I, I'm, I'm in pretty good spirits. Did, uh, did Michael tell you he's a Detroit boy? That's what he said. Yeah, that's right. Nice. I, I've been here yeah, since... Uh, I thought, yeah, I thought it was Yorkshireman trying to take over the world, but it started <laughs> fucking Michiganite. <laughs> yeah, us, <laughs> us, us Michiganders. That's right, exactly. So, Michiganders? Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no duck feathers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How's things with you? You know what? Pretty good. Pretty good. It's in a very exciting time. Um, where are we? March? Yeah, we, uh, fuck, we're, we're mixing a new studio album, which I think is going to be probably the best we've done song content wise. And uh, it's got all the white snake elements, and, uh, but with a, an incredibly fresh, vibrant coat of paint. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Man, I yeah, was I was uh, yeah. I, no, I was gonna say I was talking to Joel Holster last September, and he was talking about uh, recording it back in uh, September. He was getting ready to go off and record it with you guys before going and to do to do uh, TSO and everything. So I'm really looking forward oh, yeah. to hearing this. Yeah, yeah, we're very excited. The guys all flew in um, uh, fr- last Friday and had uh, we shot the video, the first video for the new album, uh, which is called Flesh and Blood. It'll be on our fabulous uh italian friends frontiers label oh cool um yeah so we shot the video and joe was straight out because he had tickets for take his son to the madison the, the opening of the baseball season at madison square garden so it was a pretty pretty frenzied time we were supposed to shoot it back in february and i got that h3 flu it was just i think the worst flu ever really Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, it cost me two months, really. So almost two months of, uh, of recovery and uh, really kicked my ass. Well, you know, are not getting any younger, Meltdown. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> None of us are. But it didn't seem to affect your tweeting that much, did it? That's really the important thing. No, once I got out of the ICU, I was fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I enjoy that. It's just, it really is an effortless piece of fun for me. And, and, uh, it, it's just for information, amusement, you know, and, and I've never really been able to connect so clearly uh, and uh, so regularly with people who support my work. Yeah, it's so, so it's cool. Most, most of the time, it's an t- absolute uh, pleasure uh, to, you know, they they ask me more interesting questions than a lot of professional journalists, <laughs> to be honest. Well, you're not, you know, you're not so, talking to one right no. now, so... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Journalists, not radio guys. You know, they, uh, but it's it's fascinating because of the stuff they want to know. Uh, and really, I'm intensely private. But this has encouraged me just to be more outgoing because uh, I don't really get to meet people at shows. You know, it's like I'm in and out, like uh, whatever um, adjective you care to use. Uh, so I don't really get to meet as many people as I'd love to who support. You know, White Snake. Yeah, I was just reading the other day. Uh, uh, beginning of March was the uh, 40th anniversary of your uh, first gig. Did do you remember that gig? Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> Every week's a fucking anniversary. I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, I'm, this is like my 45th or 46th year in the music business. And, right, right. You know, I don't know what it is. Like if somebody p- tweets me every day, going, "Ah, oh, happy anniversary, forevermore, <laughs> seven years ago." Oh, okay. So I'll dig out a bunch of pictures from that session, you know. Uh, so they actually give me information. I'm, I'm tr- trying to give them information, what they've been curious about. But these people know White Snake's history better than me. <laughs> but yeah, for, uh, for, amazing. This is our 40th anniversary this year. Amazing. Yeah. That's cool. You're coming through Detroit on July 15th with uh, Jason Bonham. That's going to be a uh, kick-ass. Oh, uh, man. I, well, I've known him since he was a kid. I'm right. his uncle. <laughs> <laughs> he was the first, the first guy. Yeah, I had Ian Powell. I've always had fabulous musicians, of course. But Jason and I, well, I, I knew his dad, God bless him, you know, the amazing John Bonham. Um, and known Jason since he was a nipper. When he was 17 years old, he came uh, to a White Snake sound check. Uh, and, and Jeff Beck was I was hanging with Jeff at the time and uh, he says Debbie can I jam and I hadn't heard him play 
you know, I just knew his dad had told me he got him, you know, like a mini kit of drums and stuff when he was very young. Mm. Uh, and I said to Ian Pace, I said, can uh, can Jason just jam with us? And he went, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, here. Yeah. Because uh, he was a big fan of his dad's. And Jason played a song of ours called Ready and Willing. And closing your eyes, my God, Mel Dan, it was like listening to Bonzo. Really? It, you know, he played it. It, it's his dad beat his dad's soul comes through Jason. It's amazing. So it's going to be a super reconnect. And uh, uh, and Foreigner, of course, I've known Michael Jones for too long. Neither of us want to own up how long we've known <laughs> each other. You know, and of course, Chris Brazier, the drummer, was working with me for a time. I, I was going to so, say, you know, if you had to send Christmas cards to every one of your former band members, you'd be there all day, right? Well, that's why I don't send Christmas cards. <laughs> you just tweet them. <laughs> I just tweet them. There you go. Happy tweet. So uh, I was talking to Joel, like I said, back in the uh, in this in the uh, fall, and he he mentioned a top secret project that that he was working oh. on for you. Did, did, did is that anything that you can talk about, or has that already come out? Or yeah, yeah, totally. Well, last year I did uh, more projects than I've ever done in my entire career. I think we did six projects. You know, the, we we were working on. Uh, um, the 87 special, right. cause that was 30, unbelievably 30 years old, uh, anniversary last year. <laughs> Another <laughs> anniversary. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. And that went that, the box set went, you know, to number two, I think round all over the fucking place. <laughs> uh, amazing. Uh, the super deluxe was such a delight to put together with unusual aspects that people have never heard. Um, and that was a treat. And then to have it successful was even more so. I returned uh, to the Warner Warner Brothers family for the third time in my career. Uh, and we have a super relationship. Uh, so they did a super job on that. I think we did a super job and they did too. But what Joel's talking about is an album that was a White Snake album was never released in this country because I was alienated from Geffen Records for a time. Time. Okay. Uh, it was an album called Restless Heart. Uh, and after doing Slip of the Tongue and the Coverdale Page Project, I wanted to do something a little more organic, stripped down. And this album, um, which actually was supposed to be a David Coverdale solo album, and then the EMI uh, executives in London uh, decided that they wanted it to be a Whitesnake project. And I went, well, it isn't. There's some great rock on there, but it's more ballad soul influences. So, you know, I kind of originally turned the drums up and the guitars up a bit. Songs are really good. I wrote with Adrian Vandenberg, superstar, a great partner. Uh, but I've always felt it was light on the production. So uh, Michael, who you just spoke to, my co-producer and I, uh, Joel was in Vegas working with Sher. Uh, Jesus, do I sound like the biggest name dropper on the fucking <laughs> planet? Okay, so if Vegas is like 50 minutes from us in Reno. So I said, do you fancy doing a session for me? on Because Sher only does a couple of days and then a few days off. So he came up and just play. I mean, you know, he's just he's right. ex, awesome. he's extraterrestrial. Yeah, yeah right. He's a, in, in the true sense of the word, not the cliche sense of awesome. He truly is an awesome, uh, and he's a fabulous guy too. Um, so he came in and, you know, Adrian Vandenberg's guitar is still secure. He just added big, heavy rhythms, you know, Les Paul rhythms. And it's as fresh as, and we used a, do you know the uh, keyboard player called Derek Sherinian? Yeah, of course, from uh, Sons of Apollo and yeah. Dream Theater and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he was a super player, very, very inspired by my dear old friend John Lord. Uh, so he put the keys on from his home studio. It sounds like, you know, this amazing deep purple uh, early white snake fusion. It's, uh, yeah, I'm very excited about it. Yeah. That's I cool. I don't know when I'm going to put it out, but it was just, you know, why not, you know? Right. Hey, I'll tell you what, I know my time is running out. I got two more quick things here for you. First of all, yeah, sure. it was it was a couple years removed from the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with uh, Deep Purple. I mean, do you ever think about uh, that? Do you ever think about white snake and stuff like that in, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame maybe someday? Well, you know, we got on so well with the people there. Um, Michael was with me, of course. He's my right-hand guy. We've worked together over 30 years. Says a lot for you Detroit guys. That's right. <laughs> um, staying power. <laughs> so he was talking to those guys, and they are uh, definitely going to try to get uh, propose uh, White Snake and, believe it or not, uh, Coverdale Page wow. project. Because, you know, they're all fans of that album. 
So I, I don't know whether that will manifest, but to, to be able to, if that does, and to have three, I'll be up there drinking with Jack Nicholson <laughs> if I get three Hall of Fame things. Are you kidding me? Uh, of course, of course. That'll be like the immortal David Coverdale shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a glass of wine, you know, you put it on your Twitter and the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Chicago called me the Dean Martin of rock. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Hey, uh, final thing here for you, David. I know you got yeah. other interviews and stuff today, and I got I to gotta talk to my friend uh, Don Jameson, the Wolverine, he says you call him. Oh, send my best. Of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please send my best. Donnie's a great kid. Uh, what are You know, you've been in this business, you know, five decades. What are the keys to your success, do you think, that you've had so much longevity? Being fabulous. <laughs> One word, huh? Uh, just loving what I, you know, I have no idea. If, I, if You know, I remember George Harrison saying something years ago was if, if I knew, you know, I'd become a manager and just I'm shitloads of bands. You know, if I knew what the, <laughs> the recipe for that was, I just care very deeply about what I do. I think the people who support me are completely conscious of that. I give them whether it's good enough or not, but I give them the best I've got. And I always have from the very from from the time I uh, performed with Deep Purple through to whatever the show is. If I if, if I'm ill, I'm still going to give you everything I got. You know, it, it might not be enough sometimes, but it's everything I got. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, David, I could talk to you for hours, I'm sure. But I know you got other interviews saying this has been a super fun and an honor and a privilege. And I can't wait for the show on uh, July 15th. I was I was working out to old White Snake album, Sam. I feel extra pumped up today. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for your hospitality, Meltdown. Always a pleasure, mate. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. God bless. Bye, man. How cool is that? You want to have a drink with that guy. You know what I'm saying? There's David Coverdale from uh, White Steak and Deep Purple and uh, Coverdale Page, like he was talking about. I mean, this guy has worked with so many different people, so many different uh, artists. It's just unbelievable the uh, career he's had. And still going strong, going out on tour this year with uh, Jason Bonham this summer to uh, promote their uh, brand new record, which uh, drops this coming spring.